So critical in meteorology is the concept of warm air rising and cold air sinking. And you may be well aware of those two issues, but you need to understand why warm air rises. And I think that you do on a, the basis of density and why cold air sinks on the basis of density. But the big part is what happens after the warm air rises. And so that's what we're going to explore here. We're going to explore the concept of expansional cooling and compressional warming, which is so important to atmospheric temperature levels. So let's get into it. When you have warm air rising, it doesn't stay that way forever. <laughs> Um, warm air eventually rises and cools and then the cold air will sink and warm back up again and you see this in a beautiful cycle which is so important for our weather if you were living around Colorado this would be old hat for you we see it a bit in New Jersey, but not nearly the way they see it in the Rocky Mountains and major mountain ranges. But you can understand that this drives surface weather across continents. Let's understand why warm air rises and cools. It's not because it's in a cooler area of the atmosphere. No, it's not. And what happens as a result of that warm air rising and cooling? And it has a lot of uh, relationships to um, carburetors. So let's talk about it and let's analyze it a bit more. As this warm parcel at sea level starts to rise, it will encounter lower atmospheric pressure at altitude. And the pressure at altitude can impact this parcel. We've learned that as um, altitude increases, pressure decreases. So at altitude, this parcel is going to encounter lower air pressure. And in that lower air pressure, the warm parcel molecules are going to go bonkers. They're going to exert their energy and transfer all their energy to the walls of this parcel so that they can expand it out in this lower atmospheric pressure. And they are going to put all of their energy to the parcel walls. These are all imaginary parcel walls. These are all models of physical phenomena in the atmosphere, but they are critical to understanding what is moving air parcels and what is moving our air across the country. As these molecules expand the parcel volume, they've done a lot of work to expand that parcel, but then they realize they've done so much work, they're tired and they lose energy. And when they lose kinetic energy, that means they lose kinetic temperatures and the temperature of the parcel, which is nice and expanded now, has gone down. So this parcel of warm air rises and expands and cools. Oh, and it can condense. So you may find that these parcels rising up will expand and cool and condense, and you could have a rainy windward slope on this side of the mountains. What's that got to do with a carburetor? Well, let's look at it. There's no raining in a carburetor, but there is a lot of expansional cooling in a, in a piston. And these are two pistons here. Your car generally has four or six or eight of them that drive the engine. This expansional cooling is so powerful that it drives the, your, the engine of your car. In this case, you have warm air here. It has been fired by a spark plug. It is hot. And it is hot to the point where it will start to move against the walls and expand against the walls and put all of its energy to expanding this piston up. And it does a very good job in expanding that piston up and driving the work of the car. And in doing all of that expansion against the walls of that piston, those molecules got tired out and they started to lose energy. And when they lost kinetic energy, in the molecules, the air molecules cooled. And as a result, you have an 
a piston with an expanded volume and cooler air on one side of the cycle. So this expansional cooling is so powerful that it drives weather patterns and it also results in the fact that we do have cooler temperatures at altitude. So the power of this concept is very important for you. Let's talk about the other side, coming down the other side of the mountain and compressional warming. Eventually, this cool air at the top of the mountain will become dense because now you've got low energy particles in this parcel and they'll start to really move toward the bottom of the parcel because they're more dense and the parcel will start to sink. And as it starts to sink, this parcel encounters higher energy pressure at lower altitudes. That higher um, atmospheric pressure at lower altitudes starts to compress the parcel molecules and push in on them. When that, when those parcel molecules get compressed, they have no place to vibrate. They start to collide into each other because they have less space for vibrating. When they collide into each other, they really start to generate kinetic energy from bouncing off of each other. When they create more kinetic energy, the temperature of the parcel starts to increase. Now we have a compressed, warm parcel that's heading down this mountainside and really warming the area over this. This is why on the eastern side of the Rockies, we have deserts that are very warm because we have areas that have dry, warm, high pressure air in those areas. Cool air sinks and contracts with that compression and warms. What does that have to do with carburetors? It's the same thing that drives your engine. So now we have this expanded piston with lots of cool air. And this cool air will start to become a little bit more dense and move down to the bottom of the piston. And when that happens, the piston driver sinks and adds pressure to the, that dense area of molecules. It compresses those molecules. And in doing so, it increases the molecular collisions of those molecules all packed together. And when they start to collide against each other, they start to, they start to transfer energy among themselves. In transferring energy among themselves, they start to transfer more kinetic energy and voila, the temperature of the air starts to increase. You have compressional warming in your car that drives it. The process of compressional warming and expansional cooling and compressional warming, expansional cooling is what drives your car down to 87. Just to sum up, compressional warming is going to take an expanded cool parcel and create a compressed warm parcel at higher atmospheric pressures that are down towards sea level. It's why we tend to find in the United States that the snow is on the western side of the mountain and the desert is on the eastern side of the mountain. So if you fly into Denver, everything is pretty warm and calm. It's on the eastern side of the Rockies. Then you take a two hour drive to um, the ski resorts on the west side of the Rockies. To go into this for convection, because convection is moving that parcel up and convection is also bringing that parcel down. Convection is associated with vertical rise and sinks. And we call that part of the con circulation convection. And we, that is also the process for transferring energy. So we've looked into that. 
we must look into what started that convection and make sure that you understand that the warm air for Earth all comes from the hot surface of Earth. The sun does not warm the air. The sun warms the surface. The surface conducts out just the first few inches in the conduction process. And then convection can move that air vertically. It can move it in a rise, then it can move it in a sink. If the air moves horizontally, it moves horizontally due to pressure differences, which we are going to cover. That horizontal movement is called wind. So wind in meteorology is a horizontal movement of air. The process for transferring energy in wind is called advection. I need to introduce that to you, and then we will get into it more when we talk about circulation patterns across um, the country and across the world. So there is convection in vertical movements, there is wind in horizontal movements, and they both transfer energy. I hope that you've learned about compressional warming, expansional cooling as part of that convection process. Take care.